What's up everyone? This is Raw Matt. It's winter right now, though you would never know it. They... So much sun. But, that's what you get for living in the desert. Looks nice, but my gym is outside. Often I can't work out if it's just absolutely crazy. Although I'm not a bodybuilder, obviously. I intend to stay physically fit with weights. They're one of the best ways to cross train if you're smart. Now, the thing about me is I'm always training with injuries. So, I'm gonna teach you how to train with injuries. So now, everybody should warm up. I recommend stretching. Stretching should be the most important. But if it's early, you know, you need to get some blood going. So, I recommend the boat roll. The boat row machine is an awesome. What in the world? The boat row mach machine is just awesome. It is an incredible machine. Not just for burning calories. I could care less about that. The reason I am making this video series is because I have trouble gaining weight. Always have. And the diet, and it was, and diet does not matter. I ate everything before and it still didn't matter. And no, it wasn't my age. I was much older anyway. So, let's just pretend that I've warmed up and that I've stretched, because I have. So we're going to jump into a push day. Today is everything that has to do with your, your triceps, your belt, your front shoulder, your chest. And there are a couple exercises that I don't do. And there are some that I do. And there are some that I start with and others that I finish with. We're going to be rotating all the time. This is why I'm going to make a series out of it, so that you can train with me while we do these things. You're going to see me busted up a lot. I even kind of have a black eye now, regardless. So, we're going to jump into some presses. I start with incline bench press. I find it's the most valuable, because it's the one that people usually wait till last to do. And that's not something you want to do, because you need to build your form first. So, let's just jump right into this. I'm going to start with lighter weights. Whatever is light for you, I don't care what the numbers are. Numbers mean nothing. All that matters is that it's resistance to you. We're going to start a little light on two sets, and then we're going to jump immediately into heavy reps. And I have a reason for that. We're only going to be doing six total working sets, and then diminishing return sets in. That's a lot more than the average, which is people usually do about three working sets, but they transition into another exercise. And I really can't do pec flies. They're just too much stress on the bad shoulder. So why put any extra stress on a joint that doesn't need it, especially if you have an injury? So I like just presses. We're just gonna be doing those. If you can do pec flies, I really like them. They're a great tool. Matter of fact, they're even great to start with sometimes before doing the presses because you can really feel your chest in those press exercises. But they're just out for me. I can never do them. I tried even last month and it just set me back. I just, the injury flared up, caused even more pain. I initially got it from a takedown from Jim Abril who just decided to slam me 100% on like my second week of training <laughs> and I had no idea how to break fall. So my shoulder, there it went for that career. Okay, so we're just going to start nice and light. All right. Incline. Breathe out on the hard part of the exercise, which is pressing up. Now, though this is just lightweight, we're going to be moving slow. It is the warm up. Just focus and breathe. That was set one. We're going to do one more with a little heavier weight. And then we're gonna jump into the large ones, like I said. Now let's mention a couple cool people that are great instructors for online when it comes to bodybuilding. One is Gallant. He is in Canada and has a great series of videos who teaches you all kinds of rep ranges, sets, plateaus. And he's a natural bodybuilder, has an incredible physique. Train the muscles, not the joints. So if you're trying to emulate what he has, you probably want to do the two-day split. 
That's what he's doing. All right, set number two, here we go. Always remember, get rid of the weight that's by your feet. Don't be lazy and put dumbbells all around you, right at your feet. When you bump the weight, you're gonna slam your fingers into those weights that are on the floor. So, if these are my old weights, get rid of them. Get them as far out of your way as you possibly can. I rest two minutes between my sets. If I rest less than that, I go down in weight. But since this is the first working set, I'm going to press heavy. Therefore, I rest more than required. Usually when you want to burn more calories, you lessen the duration between your sets and you just keep pushing the weight. And obviously without the recovery time, you're going to need to push lighter weights. But we're going to jump into the big ones now. So about two minutes is kind of required on that first set. Now, this one gets intense. So just find what works for you. I would love if you were able to push the reps six to eight times. That would be great because this is your power set. So you want to push very hard. You want to get strong. But we also are going to be doing a lot of drop sets. And I drop set all the time. And drop setting gets you more result quicker. So that's really good. But you don't get as strong. You don't need to. You, especially when you're trying to maintain your weight all the time. If you want to fight at 145, drop sets are the way to go, believe me. You get, they're really, really good. They get you in shape really quickly. So we're going to jump into the heavier ones now. If I get my six reps and I still have energy, I drop and go isolation one by one. You don't have to do this, but I enjoy it. It's fun. the same heavy weight if you need to go down you can but I'm gonna drop set I, I love to do them but I might not be in shape to do them <laughs> so I don't know how many reps I'll actually get lighter ones down I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go down to 35s now you have to be careful remember I said don't put weights near you so you don't dump the weight on them so put them a little out of your range down by your feet all it takes is one mistake. A friend of mine blew his finger off in the gym. Shot right off because he slammed the weights down.
I don't have anyone to hold the camera for me today, so I have a kind of a bad angle. So I'm going to have to adjust you now to the side because I'm going to do some triceps, and I want you to watch the angle that I do them in. So move you over here. All right. Why this matters is there's multiple heads to the tricep. And what we're going to be doing now is strengthening the head that's going to help you with the presses. The reason why is the stronger your press gets, the bigger your muscles get. Strength and size are synonymous. You can't get a lot bigger without pushing more weight. And when your body adjusts to that, you often either need to increase in weight or reps. The choice is yours. Calisthenically, by just doing push-ups, you have to go up in reps because obviously, unless you're going up in size and weight, it's not going to be a very big adjustment. That's why dumbbells and free weights usually work the best for gaining the optimal amount of size. Take Herschel Walker, for example. The guy is a beast. He started when he was very young, probably around 12 years old, doing push-ups. He couldn't even do any when he started. But today, and for the last few decades, he's been up to 3,500 a day. I, I've heard that you do some crazy workouts just in the morning be, before you even start doing the proper workouts. Like you do a couple of hundred push-ups and sit-ups. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, you know, I'm not a weightlifter. I've been doing isometrics for about, uh, ever since I was a Oh, 15 years old. I started out when I was a little boy doing about 5,000 sit-ups, 5,000 push-ups every day. I went into pro football, college football, never done any weights. Where I all did isometric, doing all the push-ups and sit-ups. Today, before I even go over to practice, I do about uh, 3,500 sit-ups, anywhere between 750 to 1,500 push-ups. So that's my workout I do every day. And, uh, you know, it's been working for me. I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but um, I'm up there in age. Let's just get that right. He said 5,000 push-ups and 5,000 sit-ups every day. But you know how much time that takes out of the average person's day? There's no way they're going to do that many because you're just going to keep building up. That's where dumbbells come in. You don't have to spend your entire day just doing push-ups. Now, you can do some one-arms, but not everybody can do those. So you start with just the proper form. Now, dumbbells are a little intimidating and you go to the gym, just use a machine. People go, well, you're not going to get good results with the machine. Well, they teach you what to do, so don't be worried about it. Just sit down, and the machine will guide your posture. You won't, you won't be doing it wrong because you can't do it wrong. The machine is set, and it's based and locked in. The sprinklers just came on. I might have to change your position if the water comes this way. So what I mean by the triceps is there's a couple heads. So... What we're going to be working on is not the outer part. That would be here. This is the outer part of the tricep. This you get from flying out in this direction. We are going to be working on the inside part of the tricep. Okay? Underneath here. This is for the press. That's your strength from that moment. Movement. That's so I'm going to be using a bar for this because of the motion that I want is going to be over my face like a skull crush but I'm not pushing it straight up. I'm going to be pushing it above my head and coming down to the top of my head when I'm laying on my back. So you will see it from a side angle. I hope this works. My grip on the bar is a little about shoulder width apart, becoming elbows together, not wide. You're going to be lowering the weight to the top of your head and again, pressing out. So there's no rest, you keep constant tension. It's called time under tension and it's the most important thing. People think that how many reps you do matters. It doesn't. It's time under tension that matters. And a lot of people want to know if you go to a failure. Sure. I love going to failure. I don't go to failure on absolutely every set, but I do on my first and I do on my last. <clears throat> Now, if you do body weight exercises and just body weight, you do want to go to failure every time. All right, now I'm back. If you've knocked out three or four sets of those, you're golden, especially if you drop set it. It's completely over. So your triceps are exhausted, your chest is done. Now, usually on a push day, people will incorporate shoulders. We'll do that, but mine are very different yet again, and it's because of injury. So there's multiple ways of doing the shoulder flies. They have machines, they have cables. The most famous and most popular 
are the two arms at the same time, bent knee, elbows out, and your pinkies come up and you pretend you're pouring the cup out. It's not about coming as high as you can. That's ridiculous. That's old school move. What most people do is they just come right to here. That's really all you need. From the side, it looks like this. You're coming up and your elbows are flying out and you're pretending you're taking a cup and you're pouring out the water. Now, used to be my favorite exercise. It's for taking the back and you're trying to get behind somebody if you're in the guard. So I use this move all the time. Unfortunately, the shoulder doesn't allow it. So I incorporated and invented a new one. And though the range of motion is short, it is a phenomenal workout. It gets me stronger than the last ones because pulling the weight all the way up, you're much weaker here than you are here. So you can use a lot of weight down here just by shortening the range of motion. And then when on good days, when you're not injured, you can just go to the top and keep the range of motion right here with lighter weight. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do my favorites, which are the short rep range. So again, we're gonna do one side at a time. You grab, you know, like a heavier weight than normal because you're gonna do easy reps and you're just gonna come right to here. And I don't come all the way down. Remember, there's no rest. So coming onto the side, straight out. I don't need to invent anything. I don't need to be creative. And it gets really hard, really quick. So just try your hardest. And then as soon as you finish, you can drop set the weight and go down, or you can just trade arms and take right off again. And then switch arms and go from here. Look at this, the sprinkler came on. It almost, if I would have stayed down there, my computer would have been wet. Next set, same exact thing on the other side. Just watch your form and keep the time under tension. So don't relax. Don't swing the weight up and bounce it off your leg. Concentrate. It's just the same speed as up as it is down. <clears throat> if you're into weight training anyway, you'll be doing this cycle twice a week. You're gonna get so strong and fast, unbelievable. Now, Athlete X, He's kind of a trainer that shows you awesome rep ranges and range of motions based on your joints and your system. I recommend you go check him out. He's really good. And he isn't just about bodybuilding, he's about cross fitness. I'm nothing compared to that guy. I just have more injuries than him, so I'm gonna show you what works for me, being riddled with injuries from Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So if that's your thing, if you have my body type and you're extremely lean and can eat anything you want and have trouble going up in weight, we will be going up and wait together because I've been really, really thin lately and I caloric restrict and I, I eat plants. So I'm, I, as you would imagine, putting weight on isn't the complete easiest thing to do because I'm not willing to eat bread and pasta for every meal. So uh, you can go up with me and wait as we train together throughout this next year, make it your new year's resolution to do something good and great for yourself. And that would be starting up an exercise program. You can work out with me if you want. If not, I'm going to recommend some people for you to go check out right now. And that's it. We're all mad out.